Welcome to Chim Technologies. My name is Ranjan. Today I am an instructor for the Angular 14 features. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about how, like, what are the different different features are available in Angular 14. And we'll do a project. Which project is going to discuss about the real-time difference between Angular 13 and 14? Means we are going to create a two separate project, one project in Angular 13, another project in Angular 14, and we'll see that. What are the two different what are the different different features are available in two different different uh, like version of angular before going into that you must have to know angular because without knowing angular there is no uh, like sense to know the difference between the angular 14 and angular 13. now let's go and start what are the why what is angular and why angular is required and we'll discuss what are the new new features are available in angular 14. As all of you know that Angular is a like UI framework which is used to develop the single page application. Means to develop a any kind of single page application, we are going to use Angular. Same to same, suppose in the market there is a n number of different different uh, like library or frameworks are available. Using that, you can develop the single page application just like React, Vue. Uh, n number of different different are available, but mostly we are using Angular, React, and Vue. But today's uh, class, we are going to discuss about like Angular is releasing its new version every six months. Like you can say that every quarter also they are releasing new new version of the Angular. You know that Angular uh, like from Angular two to now current version of Angular is Angular fourteen. If you remember, there is the initial version of Angular is Angular two. I am not talking about Angular one, but normal component based development Angular two. Now it's Angular. 14th. In Angular 2 to Angular 14, we have n number of new new features that are introduced in each and every uh, like um, uh, version of the Angular. But in today's class, we are going to discuss about Angular 13, okay, and Angular versus Angular 14. We are going to discuss these two things today, okay. In this case, we will learn how the new features in Angular 4 is going to easy our software development and how it's a totally faster than a Angular 13. It, it doesn't mean that Angular 14 is not faster. Every every version is always be more better than its previous version. For that reason, we are going to start with Angular 13 and Angular 14. So let's go and first we'll do one thing like install Angular go and install the angular know that angular is like just like a like cli based command like whatever you can do you can do with the help of the command prompt right that is called the cli now let's go and discuss about the angular stuff how you can go and work with the angular you know that the angular site official site name is angular.io right this is the official site of angular where you can go and learn about much more into Angular. If you go to Angular.io, if you scroll down, you can see that they have written the current version. What is the current version? You can see that the current version is 14.2.0. Now we just ignore this 2.6, this one, just only focus on 14 point. Means current version of Angular is 14th. If you want to know that, what is the current version of Angular? Every time you go to Angular.io site, and if you scroll down, you can see that we have a version is written here. Okay. But in, in between that, we have to know that what is a stable version. Because every time there is a development version, another one is a stable version. For that, for that reason, what you can do now, you go to npm js. Okay, node, you know that npm js is a node package package manager site, and here you go and search angular slash cli okay and you all of you know that angular cli is the one of the tool which is going to create the angular application right just or just wait for um okay now after you enter the angular cli you can see that the current stable version is 14.2.8 but if you go to angular site you can see that 14.2.6 in this site they did not update the site but by default they have updated angular for 2.8 Means now, if you go and do the Angular installation, the default 
package will be going to store as a 14.2.8. This is the current version. But sometimes you require to target a specific version. For that reason, if you go to this site, if you right hand side, you can see that to 625 versions are available. If you go and click it here, you can able to see there are n number of different different versions are available. If you go to the current version, the current version is 14.2.8. It is called a latest version. Apart from that, you can see that we have different different kind of version. You can 13.3.9, 12.2.2, 8, 9, 11, 7, 10. All are the different different versions are available. Based on your project requirement, whichever you want, you can go and use into our application. But today we'll go and use this 14.2.8 as our as our uh, like latest version. But you can see that in this right hand side, if you go to each and every package, there is a right hand side, you can see that there is a number of downloads. You can see that like 14.2.8 is 99,000 downloads. Why? Because you know that due to this 14.2.0 is released recently, due to that, there is very less number of people are going to work on the 14 because no one wants to upgrade their project because only few features are introduced in the 14.14 .14 version of Angular. Due to that, you can see that in Angular 13 is more downloads are there because more people are using the Angular 13 into their project. But if you see after some days or after some months, the loud Angular 14 increase, download will be increased. Okay, now if you go to right hand side, there is another thing called tags. What is tag? Tag means like what is the whatever the version you are like adding here. What is the support level for that one? You can see that 14.2.8 is the latest one. Means if you're going to install the NPM I, this is the latest version you're going to get it. But suppose you are going to install the 13.3.9. Now this is a LTS. Okay, what is LTS? L LTS stands for long term support. Means Angular is actively working on 13.3.9 version to if there are any error, if there are any bug or anything will be required, they are actively working to 13.3.9 to fix that one. For that reason, you have to only choose those like Angular version, which version contains the LTS. Apart from that, don't choose any other one because other one may be contain a box. If you go down, you can see that there is nothing called LTS here because these 14.2, these are the other version you are seeing that they are not actively development. For that reason, every time you will go and create an application, first see that that application, that version contains LTS or not. If the LTS is there, you will go and use that one. Okay. Clear? Now, now this is pretty much about how we can go and know that what is the current version, what is the older version, all these things we will know that. Now, let's go first create one application. You know that to install the Angular into application, we are going to do npm i angular slash cli. Now, before that doing that, let me see that because in my machine, I already installed all the softwares. Let me do one thing. Let me open the command prompt. Okay. Let, let me open the command prompt. And here, let me type ng version. If you type ng version here, you can able to see that we can able to see the angular version here and just wait you can see that in my machine current version is 13.3.9 okay this is my 13.3.9 now let me do guys one thing let me first create a application in angular 13.3.9 means angular 13 then i'll going to update the uh, cli to our angular 14 then i'm going to create another project side by side we're going to create two project one is angular 13 angular 14 we'll see that difference between these two project okay now here let me create a folder okay let me create a folder suppose 5th november and let me go to this folder okay let me create ng new second guys let me create a folder called angular 13 okay and another folder called angular 14 we'll do side by side comparison angular 14 
I'll go to Angular 13 folder. Now here I'll type ng. You know, to create an Angular application, we have to create ng new project name. Let me create project name is Angular 13. Okay. Angular 13. Now click on enter. Now once you click on enter, it's going to create a new project in using the Angular 30. Let me press yes. I'm going to create Angular routing, which uh, like CSS you are going to use. We are going to choose the CSS. Now let's create the application. This is going to create the Angular application for us. Right? This is the Angular 13 application. Now you can see that inside here, I have a project called Angular 13. And this is going to create a list of application. And let this is going to create a, all the npms all of you know that this is the way we are going to create the boilerplate code for angular let it be installed all the angular meanwhile what we're going to do now we'll go and install the angular 14 into our machine let's see now what are you going to do now now let me open another command prompt and here i'll go and install the angular 14. okay how can I do that you have two options either you can go and install in global level or either you can go and install in the local level now let me do we'll, how can go and install in the global level now, once you open the angular cli you can copy this command npm i angular cli let me copy this one once you copy you will go here and paste and you have to put hyphen g know that hyphen g in npm it stands for global if you are going to install any packages in a global level, that is use the global. Why global is required? Because next time you are going to create the application, no need to install the same CLI again and again. For that reason, I will go and type hyphen g. If I do not put hyphen g, then what will happen? It will not going to install in global level, it will only going to install in the local level. Right? Let me click on enter. Once you click on enter, what you're going to do? It's going to install the latest version of Angular uh, CLI into our application. We'll see that what is the Angular. Once you install the Angular CLI, we'll verify what is the version is got installed. After you install, what you need to do? Let me close it and again open the command prompt. Okay, again open the command prompt and here write ng version. Once you type ng version, you can see that. We are currently, previously you can see that we have a 13.3.9 version was there, but currently you can see that it's at 14.2.8 version is there. Now this is the current version, you know that this is the Angular 14.2.8. Okay. Now, got it? Now installation is completed. Now let's go and create a new application using the Angular 14. Now here, what we're going to do now, let me create a new application, ng new, same command, nothing got changed just the cli got changed ng new and the project name suppose it's called angular 40. okay now click on enter once you enter it will ask the same question do you want to add router or not okay do you want to add a router or not if we yes after that which css is going to choose we're going to choose the css now it will go and create a boilerplate code for us the default code for us now you can see that we have two sections one section we have created an angular 13 project okay these are the angular 13 project got created also we created another one is going to angular 14 project now we'll go and discuss one by one what is difference between angular 13 and the angular 14 with the same project okay now we understand the uh like these two pro do these two things using the the example of the one of we're going to create one small application and using that application going to understand the things before this is going to be ready let me go and discuss what are the different different features are available in angular okay our installation part is completed right guys installation is completed now second is called features what are the features in angular 14 that we're going to install okay to install the angular we are going to simply write npm install this one it is used to install the angular into our machine next go and discuss about the features in angular 14 this is the main part you must have to know 
just a second guys hi sir uh, can i ask a question yes yes yeah. sir if we uh, if i install angular 14 in my system after mm -hmm. some time i required uh, i need a work on angular 10 or angular 8 version project yes so uh, so at that time uh, how to install angular 8 or decrease the lower version okay perfect now guys before going into angular features like we'll let's discuss suppose how to work on the backward work, backward compatibility or the older version of angular backward compatibility yes, yes yeah now let me show you something as i told suppose as i told suppose you are to work on angular uh, again angular 13 or angular 10 and any one of this let me choose the angular 13 here now let me if you're going to do that what you're going to do let me go to which version is going to work that version you must have to choose from this angular cli go to click after open the version go to click on angular 13.3.9 anyone what whatever you want which version let me take an example of angular 13. once you go click it here you can see that in the right hand side okay you can see that we have getting this type of command let me explain what is this kind of type of command now here you can see that the only difference is they are adding one other it okay Ad adding one other it this other it meaning is guys understand every time in the npm if you're going to put the other at the end of this package name you're going to mention that this is the version or this is the package you are going to work means this is the particular version you are going to install if you don't specify the other it like other it <coughs> version name now this other if you're going to enter uh, after the package name package name is our package name our library is angular cli then this is the particular version going to install if you don't mention any particular version then by default it will go and do the latest one guys this is the latest if you don't mention anything here okay the by default one is the latest what is latest if you go to here you can see that in our tags the that's the reason we discuss about tags the tags will be here you can see that this is called the latest now by default this is going to be installed when going to install the angular cli there is no version will be installed person will mention if you mention the other rate then whatever the version you are mentioning here right whatever version you're going to choose just like angular 13 angular 14 whatever you're going to add that is going to add there this is the way you will go and work with the older version. Suppose now you install the Angular 13, 14. Now suppose you want to create a new project in Angular 13. Same to same, you can simply go and use the other symbol. Now other symbol means you have to specify the version of the package. That then that is going to be installed. Clear? Clear, sir. Yeah, this is the way you have to. Not only the Angular, any application. Suppose you work on React or you work on Vue. Anywhere you are going to use the NPM one. You have to mention the specific version because sometimes required. Suppose you are working in an older project, and in that project you require some packages. Suppose in specific version, without that it's not going to work. In this work, what are going to do? We have to use that other symbol to specify the version. That is the only way you can do that. Okay. Now, now let's go, guys. Discuss about because we have two projects are ready. One is Angular 13 is ready. Angular 14 is ready. Before going into that project, we'll see that what are the different different features which are available in Angular 14 and how we can go and use that one. Okay, now, first of all, the first feature is called, all of you know that, that is called page title. We'll go from simple to a little bit difficult, page title accessibility. We'll discuss what is Page title accessibility will discuss about all these things. Second, all of you know that standalone component. Third, typed form. These three are the basic features of Angular. Apart from that, they have performance improvement, they have a different, different kind of stuff, but we are not going to discuss on that one. But these are the three basic features that all developers should know in the case of the Angular 14. We'll go and create a small application. And in this application, we're going to see that how we can go and implement these three, three features in Angular 14. Okay, now we'll go one by one, we'll see that one. Now, before going that, let's discuss what project we're going to build today. This Angular 13 and Angular 14, what are the what is the project going to build today? Guys, we are not going to build a large application. We'll go and discuss about only small application. What is small application? 
we are going to create a web application okay in this web application we have a basic website like like we have a dip, we have a header okay we have a header and in this header we have a different different kinds of menu menu means we have a home menu okay simple website simple home menu about us menu and we have a contact menu simple one and each and every menu going to click we are going to load the content here you know this is our content page this is our content page okay this is our content page now what will going to happen if you're going to click home we're going to load the home content if you're going to click about about the about content the contact going to contact content but in a contact page in contact page we have a forms what forms we have a contact us forms okay in contact us forms i'll show you the how you can go and create a contact us form like suppose we have a simple simple field will be there suppose name and email uh, phone number and message you know that message and one other the button you know that basic contact us form will go you will see that this thing name email phone number message and button we'll make it very simple and understand the actual feature implementation we are not going to discuss about the project we're going to discuss about how the things going to be implemented okay now now these are the basic things you know that what we're going to achieve today's class one is we're going to get a small website that contain home about us contact us home content home content about content about content contact content 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 as well as contact also content this kind of forms where user go and submit okay this is the basic things going to build now let's go build this thing in angular 14 then we'll go and build the same thing in angular 13 we'll go and compare side by side okay for that reason we're going to understand why why i planning all these things and what is the use of these three things in the our application now guys let me open this application into our uh code visual studio code okay i have opened in visual studio code now open the uh, visual studio code okay and let's simply go and start npm start you know that npm start is used to start our application this is going to start the application once you start it's going to generate the bundles once the bundle generate it's going to give you the application and one thing you have to understand that is nothing change as a developer perspective means you are not going to see any difference file structure you are not going to see any kind of different different format of the application nothing you will not not see anything in the form of angular 14 see this one angular 14 this is just like a two to three to four features they are added that feature going to discuss now what we're going to do now after this compile successfully let me open now you can see that you know that when you create a by default angular project this is the border bread uh, is going to create and this is the output in there what we're going to do now guys let me go and go to src folder and app we have a app component let me remove all the codes here do not record anything here let me simple uh, make it blank and you can see that you can able to see the blank page here now what i'm going to do now let me create a simple page i'm going not going to focus on the design as of now once you discuss everything we'll go and discuss about design let me do one thing guys let me add a three uh, like let me add a three tag here as per our design we have a home about contact we are going to add a home about contact and this is the content placeholder we are going to add the different 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 page for that reason what we're going to do now uh, let me create a three different different components here okay i'm not going to create a component i'm going to create a different different modules what are the modules so we're going to create ng generate modules we are going to make a application model wise not going to get component wise modules suppose home hyphen hyphen routing you know that this is used to create a module using the home and routing is enabled once you click on enter it's going to create a home module here and that module is going to create bind the home home module same to same I'm going to create another module that is called about. Okay. We have an about page. And let me create same way another one that is called the contact. You can see that I created another one is called contact. I can see that based on our designing home about contact, we have three modules are ready. Now let's go and bind this each and every one into our routing 
if you go to app routing module you can see that this is our code right here if you go and you need to add the lazy loading already all of you know that the lazy loading is used to load the module dynamically and let me define your path here now path will be home okay the home then load uh, uh, children okay load children you are going to import this is a this is the code right import you have to add the home slash home module then m hyphen model dot home model see you have added a path which is used to load the model in a lazy loading then let me copy the same thing guys uh, three times one is for home another one is for about another one is for contact this must this thing you already know that due to that i am not discussing about much more here and here the about model and here the contact model test and you can see that is the contact model right these things are ready and what going to do now here if by default blank page first page will come path will be suppose blank be path match equal to full okay and redirect to the home page i'm basically doing the home page and redirection okay perfect i'm going to save it once you save you can see that we are going to home page now we are going to design the home page here now we are going to de 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 uh, design the page here before that we'll go to app component and here let me add a three links here and one is a okay that is called home and we're going to add uh, the same way three content are here one is home another one is about which i'm not focusing on the design part as of now we'll discuss about this thing later but first do and do our things first let me wrap with this one with uh, div and this div for the uh, menu and this div for the content okay content means you know that as per designing we have this is the menu this is the content and content we are going to use router outlet you know that router outlet is used to display the content in this area now here i'm going to add router router link equal to slash home right and same to same router link all the places router link here be about and here will be contact okay. here now save it now you can able to see this one now you can able to see the three pages home about contact now home content we are going to load here is going to say that home index about going to load here called about index contact going to load here contact index each and every component each and every route let me create a different different component and that component going to bind there if you go to the home component you can see the home module you can see that we have module got created let me go here and open the open terminal and here we're going to create a new uh, component called ng uh, generate component second guys ng generate component and let me give a home index okay this home index is going to be create as a component and sorry component that component is going to bind into our application now you can see that in home module that component got added here by default and that routing i'm going to pass here if the path is blank okay now in this component i'm going to use the home index the pretty much simple all of you know this one to same let me quickly create three component uh, let me create two more component about index and contact index and in this one we'll go and use the things now ng generate component suppose about index okay and same to same i'll go and contact right click open in uh, integral terminal now ng generate component contact index these three things we have created now every page you can see the every module contain one one index page contact index this index now what i'm going to do now let me clear everything guys here now what i'm going to do now the way i have added a path here same to same i'll go to each and every routing module and here i will do path blank and component will be the suppose our uh, about it's right about index save here 
same to same i'll go to contact and contact routing i'll go here and add the path called blank component is contact index right but to save it guys if i go to the browser like i can show you if you're going to click on home it's saying home index work you're going to click on about it's saying the about index work you're going to click the contact index work each and every link we can able to bind a different different page now, up, up to this we are ready right we can able to see everything now this is a pretty much simple code for angular to create a different different routing system home about you can see the browser let me a little bit zoom this one now home about contact this is the way right now guys let me go one thing for each and every page let me add some content content means we're going to add something then we'll go and discuss other part let me home component i'll go and go to index html page let me add a h1 tag here that is going to call was uh, home page home page and in home page i'm going to add some content so adding the content we know that we have sorry we have a like uh, the demo text we can go and add the demo text okay this is a demo text i'll go and add into site i'll go this is the home page i have a paragraph inside that let me add some text so i can see that if i go to here if you go to click home you can able to see the content here right this is pretty much i have designed just for understanding the things same to same i'll go to about about also going to create a page called home page i'm going to say that about page from about press content will be there we'll go to contact page we'll do the same thing now let me go to because how you know that which page you uh, you are using let me go to about page just a basic to understand the things right now let me h1 suppose called about about us page and here i'm going to add the paragraph let me save it same to same i'll go to contact page okay now contact page you are going to use the now uh, this is called h1 uh, contact page and here let me add a div okay now this div is going to uh, we have a two div in between two div and first div is going to display the content okay second div content we are going to add a form in later as of now we are not going to add a form but later we will show you how to add a form you can see that home page of home page about is about page contact is a contact page but later we are going to add now you can see that this is the simple page right now we will go and discuss how to fast feature what is the fast feature that is called the page title accessibility now, what is page that accessible to understand? Okay, is before if you go into routing, okay, just not just go to this page, our primary routing. This is a primary routing. We don't have anything that is called title. What is title? You know that each and every page, if you go here, you can see that we have a page title here. Like suppose Angular, Angular CLI, like uh, Lorem Ipsum, these are the different different titles displaying the browser title. But to set the title in our uh, angular we have to do the router event we have to either you have two ways either you have to go to your index you have to go to your uh, this src um you have to go index.html here you can say you, you here is the option you can go to change the title this is the one you can able to change the title that is called angular 14th and whatever you're going to add it here suppose let me write here angular 14th now if you're going to put a here so angular 14 features now if you're going to save it here you can see that we can able to see angular 14 features everywhere okay angular 14 angular 14 features everywhere but suppose in my case i require if i'm going to click on home it's going to say that home page if you're going to say about it's going to about page contact we're going to say contact page we don't have direct way we can go and make it there if i'm going to make it make it that changes we have write lot of code we are going to register the router event i'm not going to discuss that thing because we don't have any direct uh, features using that features we cannot change the title of the application means if you're going to home page i want to make sure it's a home page it's about it's about contact is contact now in this each and every page i want to change the title of the page now, this is not available in earlier version of the angular but in case of angular 14 
we have the direct api is available or like direct um, value is available that using that value we can able to or attribute we can able to change the title of the application this is the first features of this thing is called the page title accessibility okay now let us understand what is page title accessibility now in angular 30 angular 14 if you go and if you go to uh, here uh, right down if you go to route routing model in the route routes right in routes we have an attribute called title attribute called title this title attribute is introduced in the angular 14 if you're going to save the title of your application let me set the title of application called home okay i'm going to set home now what happens if you're going to save it if you go to open the browser and if you're going to click on home you can see that my title is changed to home see that my title is able to change to home but if you go to other you can see that nothing got changed because i have only set for title called home now same to same if you go to each and every path you can go and bind suppose the path here let me get a title here called about let me create a contact now in the routing attributes only they have introduced a new uh, attribute called title used to define a page title for the route this can be static static string as injectable to implement result means this title is going to be used to set the title of your page let me save it once you save you can see that you have to go and click about you can see that about got changed here same to same if you're going to click contact you can see that contact got changed here this is the way you can able to accessibility the chain you can able to change the title of the application see this one these are the things you must this is the new features is is introduced in the case of angular 14. Now what is called it is called the page accessibility and this thing you can able to add to enable these features we have to add title attribute in route okay. now the one way you can see that we can do that just imagine i'm going a little bit more advanced in title this is not not like a, this uh, this one suppose sometimes you require to do some dynamic operations in title or dynamic operation just imagine if i'm going to open this one i want to put before this contact or about or home i'm going to put synotech just like this one let me show you the uh, problem let me show the output what is the problem now how you can go and overcome that problem using some different strategy now suppose here i'm going to add this one suppose i'm going to add renotech hyphen home same to same i want to put in every places okay. just imagine you're going to open the page everywhere if you're going to about it's going to say synotech about you're going to say contact it's synotech contact every page you're going to click that you can see that the synotech will be common here so let's understand the problem here guys what is the problem the problem is going forward in a big application you have to think that this title okay home you can add every time you're adding this prefix right every time you're adding the prefix for each and every title now the things will be here like unnecessary you are repeating the same thing again and again unnecessary you are repeating the same thing again and again now let's understand without repeating the same thing again and again how we can go and achieve the how we can go and add this prefix before the each and every title means i am going to say here how we can go and manipulate the title of a application you can see that here you, you got the requirement right i want to add the synotech before each and every title of the page now you have only one of the simplest way you can go and add the synotech uh, uh, this, this string before each and every uh, path each and every title now in this case you can simply see each and every tag is able to show the synotech but as a developer we are lazy by nature right we don't want to add these things in we don't want to add this one now in this case how we can go and implement this kind of stuff in dynamically means i will add the home here 
okay i'll add the home here but if i go and if i go and run now my application should be display synotech is going to add the synotech before the con uh, before the title and let's see i'll show you here how we can go and override the default functionality of a uh, title into your own way that is our objective to understand and let's understand that part first okay for that reason what we're going to do we are going to we have going to we are going to use the concept called title strategy okay now let's go how we can go and change the title of the application using the title strategy injector okay next go now what we're going to do now is let me create a, uh, a folder here that is called suppose shared okay and here let me create a file called suppose um, my my custom title dot strategy dot ps okay let me create a file export class my custom title extend from title strategy okay. my custom title strategy extend from title strategy now what we're going to do now what, how can do the changes for that reason you have to create a class that class must be inherited from the title strategy then this is going to create a inherited class that is a uh, function called update title this thing you have to remember guys there is no other way and the, here we are going to work with the things for that reason what we're going to do now we're going to create a constructor in the constructor let me import a injector a class that is called a title okay title now then let me call the super okay now what going to do now now first get the title here then get the title what going to do now now const was my title suppose um cons let me give an variable suppose let me give an as of now um current title equal to this dot title dot this dot title dot uh, let me go and console dot log snapshot Whatever snapshot will come, that snapshot will go to first log. We'll see that what is coming there. Based on that, we'll go and change the title. To change the title, we have an option called this dot title. Okay, sorry, sorry, I have forgot. Const this dot title dot this dot title dot title dot build title. Here I have to pass the snapshot. Snapshot means whatever the routing is coming that routing will pass here then if the current title will be there then what i'm going to do now this dot title dot set title In set title i'm going to pass suppose synotech hyphen and here i'm going to pass the current title i'll explain i'll explain all these things first we'll go and implement this thing see the output then I'll go and discuss each and everything what is happening here. Now, for that reason, top of that, I'm going to add uh, injectable, right? Injectable, you know that injectable is used in the top class, which is going to use to inject into the providers. Let me go to here and in the app, app module, app, com, uh, app uh, module here. In the provide, what are going to do now? I'll add a provide. Provide is called title strategy. And here the use class is my custom title strategy. Okay. Let me first run the application, guys. Then we'll see this one. If I go and run the application, you can see that if you go to our app routing, everywhere we're adding the title, title, title here, right? But if you go and refresh this page, you can see that everywhere is adding the synotech synotech as a prefix go to about about contact is contact means 
you added the home about contact here but we have created our own strategy if you don't know what is strategy guys understand in angular to like override is a default functionality of a features not like on title we have different different kind of features also there then we are going to use the concept called strategy for just like suppose here we are using the title strategy some of the case we are going to use and it's called routing strategy how we are going to manipulate the routing strategy means you are going to set your own rules how the things going to behave same to same what i did i created a class called my custom sorry change my custom title strategy and this is going to be extend from title strategy this, this thing you have to extend in title strategy there is a class there is a function called update title update title means guys what update title contain the snapshot if you know that routing snapshot is the class which is going to contain the current snapshot of your route if you go and console this one okay console dot snapshot you will find that this is going to contain okay if i go and right click and inspect here you can you can see that this router is going to if you expand this one you can see that this contains the path called urm if you go to here you will find able to find a lot of things available here okay now we are not going to discuss in in between that but you have to think that if you're going to click any of the link you can able to see that whatever link is going to click the router snapshot is going to give you that router information or that page information in this case we are getting the whenever going to click navigating from one page to another page that time this snapshot is going to give us the current routing information and we have a build title is a one of the function okay one of the function available in that title strategy class which is going to build the title from the snapshot that is the inbuilt code they have written from that region we're going to get the title of the page if i go here if i go and console this one like current uh, title you will see that if you're going to run the application every time suppose um, i change something here about sorry if you go here you can see that every time if i go to click a home you can able to see the home is here right let me put the breakpoint here to understand this thing breakpoint means if you're going to click here if you're going to click about you can it's going to call the about and current title about let me continue let me click on contact we are getting the current title called contact here right this build title will going to build the title from the snapshot after we get the snapshot here after we get the title here then what happening we are checking that the title is there or not if they are okay if they're not there then what going to do you have to handle if the title is there then what going to happen this title injector this title class there is a function called set title we are going to set the title using it is going to accept a string now here i just add a synotech as a prefix after that what are the current title is coming that i have binded now this is the way guys you can go and create the title strategy for a angular application means means based on the your requirement you can go and change the title up to your up to you it's totally depend upon you guys how you can go manage and you have to think that now it's very easy to change the title of the application or title of your page based on your routing and this thing also going to con like uh, control by your custom strategy this is the one you must have to know this is the one of the features in our angular 14. but if you don't want to use this one doesn't matter this is just i have shown you advanced way to manage the title but this is the one you have to know that this is the one you have to know okay clear so guys now this page accessibility we have done this is the way you can able to change the page things clear now let's go the most used uh, like features of the angular 14th is a standalone component let's guys understand what is a standalone uh, component okay now i'm giving one scenario just understand the problem and for that problem we are going to create a solution for that okay what is the problem we have to create let's understand now just understand guys what i'm going to do now in our contact page in a contact page i'm going to create a component called suppose forms what forms these forms okay name email phone number uh, message button okay this is the forms we are going to create 
these forms we are going to display in contact form. But that is a requirement. The same form, suppose we are going to display in the about us. Just imagine same form we are going to display in the about us. Let's see the problem and how the standalone component is going to solve that problem for us. That we're going to understand. Now I'm going to uh, is uh, I'm going to contact. Okay, here I'm going to create a component called uh, ng generate component. Suppose contact form. Okay, this contact form is the form we are going to build our forms. Okay, now you can see that this contact form is going to add into the this modules right contact form module. Now what are going to happen? Let me go to our index space. In index space, what going to know, guys? Now let me add this form here. Like add this form. Suppose app contact form, right? These are forms. These are forms. Now in these forms, I'll go to form. Let me quickly create a few HTML element. Let me add a div, add a label. Suppose that's called as a suppose name, and below to that, let me create a call input type or support text okay. this is the way let me create copy paste this one here one many more times suppose email and um, suppose phone number suppose message and message would be the text area right text area and finally we have another one that is called the submit button okay a button called submit Okay. These are the things. Now we're going to run the application. You can see that we can able to set a form. Let me do one thing. Let me add a head on top of that H2. Okay. I suppose called contact form. Now, what about the design of the things? Let's focus on the only the this part. Now we have a name, email, phone number, message, and submit. Okay. These are the basic forms we have designed. Now, what we are going to do now, guys, we are going to the function forget about the functionality. Just forget about the functionality, just focus the UI part, then we'll go and use the um suppose forget about the uh, functionality of this contact form. Let's go and use how can you use the things in multiple page. Now, this component, okay. This component means this com contact dot forms component is bind with our contact module here yeah, right you can see that contact form is bind into our this module now the same thing i want to use in about us what I'm going to use now guys i have to go to here and uh, let me copy the same code from contact i go to the index page and here i'll copy this div code to about us contact right same thing i have to do right i can see that one thing page is throwing the error why because this component is not belongs to this module right if, the, if you're going to see the module you can see that you can able to see that this component not available due to that is throwing the error that this contact is not belongs to this one then what we're going to do now in this module in in this our um about one we need to import the contact forms right after that you can see that it's working fine but once you save it you can see that now my application is going to throw me an error it's not throwing anything let's see what it's going to throw if you're going to click about it's going to display the about page let me see this one guys see this one now it's through an error what error is throwing is saying that contact form is declared more than two times in a you multiple times into our application let's see that this is the error will come he's saying that contact form component is declared by more than one model let's understand what is more than one model because if you know the angular routing if you know the angular module structure 
we cannot declare or we cannot use the same same one same one means we cannot declare the same component in multiple modules we have to only use in one modules for that reason you can see that same contact form i have used in con in contact module same to same same contact form i have used in the about module and this is not acceptable in the case of angular angular doesn't going to create the same thing for our application but in the, to overcome this issue we are we know that we created a, another top is called, another uh, thing is called a share module share module means we are going to create another module in that module we're going to add this component and that component is going to add export the component from there then we're going to use it here let's go do the that first part let's understand what is the problem in there and how the standard component is going to like uh, like solve that problem okay you got the problem right because we cannot use the same component multiple modules if you're going to use the import then how overcome that issue in application we are going to use a shared module let me create a module called one suppose ng generate ng generate module that is called suppose called um contact form shared is going to create a module called contact form shared and this is we are going to use you can see that contact form shared will be there and this module we are going to create and going to import the contact form understand how you can going to achieve this thing why did not open that angular 13 application because same thing will do it here i just shown you the angular 13 angular 14 but the, here only we can do the both the older one and newer one okay i'll show you all this thing later you can see that you can able to see import the contact from here and what i'm going to do i'll mark as export here because without export you cannot access the component outside the modules and do that after that what i'm going to do now i go to the uh contact module i remove the contact here because we no longer required okay same to same i'll go to the about module and remove this contact here because it's no longer required what i'm going to do now here i'm going to import the contact form shared module right i'm going to import contact form shared module and this shared module i'm going to import also contact form that this is the way you can able to a second let me read on again read on again guys This is the way you have to use right this is the only way you can able to shared a same component into multiple module using the shared module i have created a shared module inside shared module i have added the component that component i have exported here and this module i have used both in contact as well as the about that's the reason you can see that now you can able to access the about page here contact page here now let's understand the things here guys you know that for that reason what you are doing just think what you are doing for this these things you are creating a separate modules right you are creating separate modules in separate modules you are adding the code and export this one again you will go and import that module into the different 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 things that is the one you are creating the previous if you go for angular 14 as uh, angular 13 angular 12 you can see that these are the things you are going to create but what I'm saying here, no, no, I don't want to use that features. No, I don't want to create a separate module. Again, going to add the component there, export there. This kind of work I don't want to do. I don't directly use the component throughout the application. Okay, without creating the separate module. That thing is not possible below to the Angular 14. In Angular, 4, Angular 13 or Angular 12, Angular 10, you cannot directly import the component into the multiple uh, like different different module because one component belongs to only one module that you can see here this is the example to overcome this issue angular introduced the concept called standalone component first understand what is called standalone component standalone component means 
the component is going to work as it is it's not going to depend upon anyone means standalone means it's a self right self established component no need to use any other places to use this one that's the reason this is called a standalone component now how will go and make a component as a standalone and what is the command is required to make a command as a standalone let's go discuss one thing to make a component standalone in an application because understand the problem right problem is we are going to create a separate module and import that component to use in other modules to overcome this issue i'll show you how you can go and use this same thing into your application without creating the separate module for the reason guys what we're going to do let me go to the contact form this is our code your component i'll go to component.ts this file and here in component decorator you can see this is a component decorator here we have a new attribute that is called called standalone simple make as true that's all everything is there this is called standalone you to make the standalone is not available in angular 13 i'll show you what are the things is not available in angular 13 this is the things you have to understand in the standalone part okay now standalone equal true once you make it standalone true then what are you going to do that now this stand now this component is totally isolated from everyone it's just a like one totally different one it's totally different from everything and that's the reason standalone is going to make standalone means you make this component independently to the each and everything means we no longer require you can see that import error because cause affected component that depend upon the ng modules now what we can do guys we are not going to use this sad module again once you see that once we make the component as standalone you can see that is throwing an error that's the reason standalone is going to make this one right this standalone is going to make our component as a this is the things we are going to add sorry this is the things going on this is the property standalone equal true once you make standalone equal true now what will happen this is going to be add everything everything means it's going to be created independent of this component now let's go and see how the standalone component is going to work into our application now uh, once i mark a standalone true then what are going to do now guys i need to remove first this one this is no longer required because this is uh, you saw the problem now what are going to do let me remove this one as of now this is no longer required because this is standalone component now if you go to contact one let me remove this one first this is no longer required right now same to same about no longer required okay let me save it once you save you can see that if something is throwing error let me read on again the application it will throw the error let's, let's see the error you say that it's not found now previously you can see that we have to import here contact form module contact form component okay now same to same i'll go to here and um, in the contact module i'm going to import this one here okay from this one okay. now save it let's see what the error is throwing we'll see this error and we'll go and use this thing in multiple ways They're saying that the component model listed in declaration as the ND module. Uh, uh, these things, let me go to this contact form. Let me make it standalone true. After that, I'll show that. Let's see, guys, what the error is throwing. Standalone equal to true. 
and then after contract from listing the declaration ng model about ng model declaration noise let me go to here Okay, let's see the what is the problem and how going to solve that problem. What they are saying, they are saying that once we make this as standalone, let me something I did here or what? Let me delete this one first. Okay. Now see. There is a problem here. What is the problem? First understand. The way we have implemented, that way we cannot go and implement the contact us. We cannot go and import these things. And let's see what is the way is happening. Now, if you go and import here, component contact form is standalone and cannot be declared in ng module. Understand that is just drawback is here. What is drawback? Now we cannot use the standalone component in the ng module. Now, do you mean it will import in instead? Now, what we're going to do now is saying that this contact form we cannot use in the form of the ng model declaration. We can only use the contact form into the routing level. Now, let's understand what they are saying. They're saying that the contact as per module is a standalone. Standalone is not going to direct import anywhere. If we're going to use the import, then what will happen you can use the contact you can use the normal one but use this one they are saying that do you mean import it instead cannot be declared in ng module in this case we cannot use here now let me go and cut from here and press it here see this one i'll show you what is the meaning of this one then we'll go discuss about all these things okay let us understand the problem here then we'll go and use the problem let me run the application first we'll see the output then only we'll go and see the things as guys understand what is a standalone then we'll understand how it's going to work let us wait for a few more seconds okay now you can see that it will work about here contact here now Let's understand what problem is happening previously. Now, what we solve this one. Now, guys, when you make when you make a component as a standalone, now this component is again converted into module. Understand the problem? When you make a component as a standalone, that time this shared component is belongs to is converted into a module internally. You are not doing anything. You are not uh, adding any route. You are not adding any modules. You are not adding anything. What happening internally? This component is standalone. Angular creating the component as a module. And you know that to use a module into application, you must have to add inside out your import statement, right? Import is used to add a component, add a module inside the import. Due to that, the contact form is a standalone component that component is you can only use inside the imports because once you make a standalone it's convert a it's converting to a module not a component you know that to add a component we can use inside the declaration if it's a module then it's going to add inside the import due to that if i go and remove guys you can see that if i go and remove the standalone you can see that it's going to throw an error see this one this import contract appears is import but it's not a standalone or and cannot be imported directly it must be imported via ng module got it but what they are saying if i going to remove the standalone here now they are become a normal component if i going to add the uh, like standalone here now you become a modules 
that's the reason how standalone is work standalone means it's going to create a single compilation file for this component it's not going to depend upon any other component any other modules that's the reason standalone will be there in this case, you can see that simply you can go and import that one into our application, right? You are simply go and importing that one application. No shared component, no other thing. Just you are using a component as a module. That is the way it's going to be work. Okay. Now see that same contact form we have used in about, same also used in the contact. Same component we use two different, different places without adding, without creating any separate component, separate module into our application. And no need to add that one inside the these things. Now this is the way you can see that we can able to manage about you can able to create the standalone component using the routing. Okay, got it. Now what is standalone component? If some component mark as standalone, now this component make as a module is convert as a module. Everything will be there only. Okay, clear about this thing, guys. What is standalone standalone component? Why standalone component is required? What is the use of standalone component? How you can go and use standalone component inside the page? Okay, this is the things you already understand. Okay, you have to make sure that standalone should be true, and if you're going to use, that should be used inside your import part. Okay, not inside your declaration part. Declaration only use if that is a normal component. If say standalone component must be used inside the import statement. That is the way you are going to use. Now clear? This is the one you understand because standalone component. The last one going to learn is called a typed form. Typed form means because this is our form, right? This is our forms. Just imagine this is our forms name, email, phone number, message. This is our normal form. Now we'll go and convert this form to a reactive form and we'll see that how the Angular is supported by the type forms and how the type forms is works. Otherwise, if your application is older version, now how you can go and use the untyped form? These two things we are going to discuss. Let's go for a five minutes break and we'll come back at 10, uh, like um, 30. We'll discuss about the type form. Meanwhile, please do, do me a favor. Please go and write a review for us. Okay. If you like the session, then do one thing. Please go and write a review for us. I'm going to share the screen into the chat box. Now, please write a review. Only one feature is left that is called the type form. Let's go for type form. Let's understand what is a type form. First, understand the existing problem. Then we'll understand the what is a type form. As a developer, guys, all of you should know that first the problem is what is the problem? If you know the problem, then you'll find the solution, right? If there is a problem in previous uh, version of Angular, due to that, they have released all these kind of features. Otherwise, what is the use of the you need to release the features? I have already explained what is a uh, page accessibility, what is standalone component and how to use the standard component into application. Same to same, we'll go and understand what is a typed form and why typed form is required and what is the problem in the previous uh, form that is going to work on that. Before going to typed form, now let's see what are the things is changed inside the Angular uh, files. Means if you go and open any Angular code, okay, Angular application, you can see that we have a you know already we have package.json in package.json nothing got changed only thing is okay obviously the this one going to change right this is a package the angular version going to change apart from that one thing got changed that is called the typescript if you see the angular 13 typescript there they are using 4.4 version angular uh, the angular uh, 13 typescript version is 4.4 but in case of Angular 14, they are using the TypeScript 4.7.2, since the 4.7. Now, you know, ask me a question. Why we are saying means TypeScript? Because as a developer, you don't care about what TypeScript are you using. You are just writing the code, right? But is there any difference why the TypeScript 4.7 is used? What is the difference? To understand this difference, first we'll go to our this TypeScript configuration. You know that TypeScript config.json is the configuration, TS config.json is the file where we are going to define all the TypeScript configuration. But here I am not going to discuss about each and everything. I am only going to discuss only one uh, like attribute, which attribute is if you get enable, then only this TypeScript features is going to work. 
the type form if i want to enable into our application then only one thing i have to do into type configuration that is i'm going to tell you that is called the strict templates the strict templates you you must have to add true if the strict mode is true then only you can able to use the the typescript the type form why the type form means what guys i don't understand what is a type type data type right just example Suppose you are defining in in our code, we are supposed to defining a variable just like for age. So defining age is a number, right? If a number equal to ten, now I know that age is a variable whose type is a number and value is ten. Going forward, if I going to assign age equal to suppose a b c d, it's going to throw an error, right? It's going to throw an compiled error. It's going to say that age cannot be a string because we define age as a number. But if you see the actual coding, JavaScript don't have a data type, right? JavaScript is not a type sort of language. There is no con data, there is no concept of data type. It's all anonymous type. Means I, if I go to go in JavaScript way, I'll define suppose bar or let whatever you can use bar or let whatever you can use this one. Then again I can define age as a b c d age as a false age as a uh, array is as a object i can do anything to a variable right but in case of typescript we are specify the type of the variable that developer no going to developer know that what is the type of the value that's the reason typescript is invented right but what happening in the case of reactive form in the reactive form i'll go and discuss what why this type form is required for a developer to overcome that issue okay i'll see that to understand this problem first to understand the older problem to understand the older problem let's go and go to our our uh, angular 13 project in that angular 13 project we will discuss about only the form we are not going to discuss about guys the entire uh, these things i'm going to explain about only the what is the type form issue and how type form is most important part in the case of angular 14 and you, you guys you don't imagine this thing we require in development when i develop the application using the angular that time there is always a pain point to get the type form value the form value i'll show you that example then only able to understand what i'm trying to say for that reason what I'm going to do now let me open our angular 13 application okay Angular 13 application let me open this one let me open the code first then we'll go and discuss about the things then we'll go and solve that problem in angular 14 okay now what i'll do now guys this is angular uh, 13 project right but right, we we'll go and stop this one because we, we are not going to use the same things here now what i can do now only things i'll do now i'll go to this contact form okay i'll copy this entire thing guys. i'll copy this entire thing this is the one thing you required i'll go to src app angular 13 remember this is the code is angular 13 I go to angular here and i'll paste it here simple one no nothing will be there let me run the application npm start okay. you see that is angular 13 project i am only discussing about angular 13 we'll go and discuss about angular 14 later we'll see the problem first in angular 13 what problem that angular 14 is solved that we're going to compare okay now let me run this application this is the most in interesting part if you're working in a a reactive form application this is the most part you have to know now let's go to the browser and uh, here i'll go into add it okay see that simple contact form i'm not discussing about the other forms only the contact form now let's make it this is the con uh, this let's make this form as a reactive form then what going to reactive form to make a let me guys close the angular 14 application as of now for the confusion let me close this one only the angular 13 we have now what i'll do now let me go to the app.module file you know that to enable the reactive form we must have to import what we must have, must have to import the reactive forms module without the reactive forms module we cannot use the reactive form in the angular for that reason let me go here and import reactive form modules get it reactive form modules to come import from forms save it now perfect now what i'm going to do now here let me create a form uh, app component let me extend from uh, on in it simple code how the component looks like okay. 
then we have a constructor right we have a constructor perfect what about this one suppose let me create a component here let me create a component called a contact form okay this is a component equal to form group you know that new new form group let me define all the form groups form controls here what are the form controls name uh, email phone number message just we have to create name now new form form control right form control okay. let me give the default value uh, blank nothing will be there okay same to same let me guys copy for uh, all this uh, four times one is name, another one is email, another name is suppose called phone number, and another name is message. Okay. Now, what it now default value will be blank here. Now, what I'm going to do now? This contact form I'll go to use here. Let me add a another div. In the div, I'll copy paste enter code. Move to the parent one. Otherwise, I'll do make no need to add ng container. Inside the ng container, I'll move to everyone. Okay. Now here I'll use form group. I'll use the form group. Perfect. Now here I'll add the form control name. I hope you are able to know that what I'm doing here because you people already know the reactive forms. I expecting you know the reactive forms. Okay, now these things. The name here it will be email, it will be phone number, and this will be the message. Button click, we create click event, click, close handle submit. Okay, and the form type will be the button. I'm doing very fast because we have to go to understand the problem, not that uh, UI part. We handle submit and here console dot log this dot contact form dot value. You know that this is the way we can able to access the code. Now let me go put the inspect here. We start from slow. Whatever I did is very fast because I understand the code. Let's go understand the problem. Let me enter the Angular uh, name was called Renotech email. It's gmail.com okay. and phone number. I'll add anything and message hello. Okay. I'll click the submit button. I can able to get the data. Right? This is the way you are going to manage the reactive form, right? All the places. This is the way you get the data. And some cases we are preparing the payload, call the API, send the data, you get the result. Right now, you pretty much able to understand as of now. Let us understand the problem first. Now, in this case, what I did, I have defined a form group. Inside the form group, let me explain what I did. In the form group, I have defined this few like the controls like name, email, phone number, message, and I have defined all these things. Now, let me do one thing. And here, this form group I have used inside our uh, form control, right? Form group, form contact form, I use form control name. This is the way we're going to bind the each and every a control name to our component in button click we are going to access the value using the form value that form like form this form group instance dot value and let's understand one thing suppose you want to access in name suppose you want to print the name now what happening with the name now you know that value property return type is any you know that what is any any is a is it stands for anonymous type okay anonymous type means it can be stored any value it can be stored string it can be stored integer it can be stored object it can be stored array any any means just like your var in javascript var is same as your any in in our case right in any like suppose if you go and see this value the value is going to store here what the object right because value because this contact form is going to give you the value in the form of the this value is what are the values available there is going to give the form of object here. You can see that it's an object, right? Call it back at start, call it back at end. It's an object. Now let's understand the problem. 
Suppose uh, suppose I want to access the name. So what are going to do? Type N A M E, right? But I will see that this N A M E is also N E. Let me write it here. Suppose called um, hello. What you can see is that hello. If I just I go two way. Let me copy this one. Paste two way for better understanding. Let me put name here and put uh, and put it here. Suppose called uh, hello. Okay, save it. After you save it, let me enter name suppose called Sinutech. Okay. Now, if you, if you are sum it, you can see that what happening is here. It is displaying Sinutech. Why Sinutech? Because if you go to code, first line is name, the value contain the name attribute because this contact form contain these are the different different property. Due to that, I can able to access the name. But as a hello, this one is getting undefined. You know what is undefined? Undefined will come when there will be no there will be no data available or there is no property available. That time you're going to get the undefined. In this case, if you see this code, why is undefined coming? Because value is a object. This object does not have any properties. This is called as hello because you can see that here no property is called as hello. These all property are name, email, phone number, message. But I can go and access the hello here. I can put the hello here because the any type due to the value is any type i can able to do all this kind of work the anonymous, anonymous type i can add anything that is the way here sometimes someone going to change the structure of the form group we don't know that that property is available or not okay this is the one thing second thing let understand let understand these things What's the first problem? The first problem is in the case of the reactive form in Angular 13 or below, you can see that we have an option called uh, we can access the value using the value reactive form group dot value and the control name or the attribute name because value is the at, uh, like object. Now object contains this attribute. Sometimes if you're going to give another name also, it's not going to throw an error because the things will be this is not going to be work. Because hello is not present inside the form group. Now it's going to throw on every time undefined. You can see that every time going to see the undefined. This is the one issue we got it. What is the first issue? Let me note it down. The first issue, guys, the first problem is we'll get undefined if the property, if the key of the form group is not available. Okay, this thing this thing will get for that reason you can see that in our case we are getting undefined all the time because this hello is not present inside this one. But guys, understand why we are going to say hello if the value doesn't contain the hello, it should not be give the hello, right? Because it should throw an error, it should be a compile time error because it's giving a runtime error. Runtime error means giving the error at runtime that hello is not present. But this thing we should get in the compile time means when writing the code, that time the compiler is going to tell that okay, hello is not a valid property inside this contact form because you know that hello is not available here. To overcome that issue, that is a concept called typed form. But it to overcome that issue, that is a concept called typed form. That will discuss how typed form is help us to identify the property of this hello is exist inside this here or not. I don't think this is a logic. This is a logic. No, no, this is a type check. They're checking that this particular things is available in here, type check or not. That is going to check. Now, let me do one thing. Let's copy the same thing here, this form designing. I'll go to my, uh, like, um, uh, this one, uh, this our Angular 14 code. I'll implement the same code there. And I'm going to show you how that thing is different from Angular 13. The real time you'll see that deep comparison between the older version of Angular and the current version of Angular 14 difference. Okay. Now, what are you going to do now? Let me go to our Angular 14. In Angular 14, let me open in the command prompt. Okay. Code dot. Now, what are you going to do now, guys? I'll do one thing. Let me copy the this Angular, Angular 14. Let me go to Angular 13. Here, I'll go and copy this entire code because this is our code, right? And here I'll go to contact form and I'll put it here. Okay. 
now i'll go to here and uh, write this I, i'm not going to write same copy paste the code let me define everything here okay let me define everything here and i'll paste it here okay as of now let me close our angular 13 project to confuse okay now first of all now see the problem first first of all guys this is standalone component as I told, if a component standalone means there is no concept of anything, right? Now you know that to enable the reactive form into application, you must have to import the form, the reactive form models. Then how we can go and import something standalone component? For that, guys, we have an attribute called import. In imports is a one of the attribute is present in the component that is going to use to import some module inside a standalone component. Let me uh, import here reactive form model but it i have imported reactive form models and let understand going forward if you are going to do the standalone component the standalone component must have to must have to if you if you're going to import anything you have to use the imports keyword imports and whatever module going to use otherwise if you're not a standalone model you have to go to your app module you have to import here or this thing you already know right but i'll show you the combination of standalone component and combination of how you can you use the you can go and import the other component right other modules i got it now let me click, click here i'll go here and this one i'll import this one fixed i'll pick this one now guys here only you can see this error you can see that here is throwing that mouse over you can see that property hello does not exist this is called the typed form now understand what happened here now it's happened here like i have defined the contact form you can see no code changes nothing changes simple code same code as angular 13 but you can see that by default angular 14 is enabled the type form check i'll show that what is on type form also after that understand now in the contact form what happened suppose these are the controls are available in the controls available we know that if you go guys and uh, if you go here and if you go and mouse over this hello you can see that what is they are returning they're returning the property if you go to angular 13 you see that what is the different type of that one it is any let me open we'll see the side by side comparison it will be better okay and side by side i'll do the side by side comparison guys just a second that's the second eh? hmm. okay see this one guys two codes are available here one is angular 13 code left hand side is angular 13 right hand side is angular 14 we'll go to side by side comparison in reactive form okay we'll, we'll top in there everything will be same right now this is a form group this is the form group both form group belongs to angular forms the both belong to angular forms and go down we can able to do the same code but you can see only difference is if you mouse over value you can see that the type is any here in angular 13 the type is any but if you go to angular 14 you can see that the type is a whatever the form control you have decided here you define here all these things that is called the value now this is the one of the difference between older version of a reactive form and angular 14 reactive form angular 14 reactive form is a by default typed form type form means everything can see this is a type type means data type you have defined this many attribute automatically the value knows these are the type data will be there okay these are name email phone number message are there due to that what happening if i go to type in hello here now the problem will be now this is going to be check that the hello does not exist in the type because these are the types is available but here you can see that if you go to hello it's not going to say an error maybe runtime is going to say that hello is undefined but here compile time compile means we are writing the code that time you can see that you can able to see the error called hello here that is called the typed form type form means the reactive form is going to check the what is the type of the value? What is the type you are going to use inside the controls you are using? Based on that, is going to use because 
if you are developing a complex form right in that case you don't know what because every time you have to go here check what is the uh, control name and put it here because any means you can add anything here is typed you know that okay these are type apart from this i cannot use anything that's the way you can use the type form this is the one of the example to understand the type form clear type form means in this case you are going to define the type of the control this control can be accessed in the value property clear one part is done it's the type of the value second now discuss about data type of a control this is the data this is the value of the form group let us understand about the form control value let us understand i say that phone number always be a number let me understand let me add this much data now know that this phone number is a number right now let me do the same thing in in our angular 13 i'll do one thing let me make the phone number as one to same to same but suppose in the handle submit what going to do now now guys let me comment this to two code okay this let me comment this to code and here what going to do now console suppose let me set the phone number let me set the phone number now this dot contact form dot uh suppose um uh, form dot controls of a phone number in otherwise you can do sorry dot value dot phone number equal to this one thing same to same i'm going to do it here i'm going to do this dot contact form dot value dot phone number equal to this one you see that what error is going now you can see that guys due to you have assigned the value as a string if you mouse over here it's a number type that is a number type but here if you see that it's a, there is no type it's just this is just a form control here it says that the type string is not accessible the type of number means going forward you can able to mention the type of the data here suppose let me different type of data called number means you have to specify the type of the form control but there is no available option here we cannot mention the type suppose i want to mention the email id should be a string okay the email id should be a string means going forward you cannot assign any other data to the email id apart from the string same to same i have defined this phone number as a number anywhere in the application i cannot assign any other other data apart from the number that is called the type form type form typed form is not only the value you can specify the type of the each and every form control that is the use of the type form what it why type form is required if you see these two example angular 13 angle 14 in angular 13 you have no control you can uh, just like anonymous type you can store any values it's up to you but in case of angular 14 you can define the type of the form control that is the most important part right not same to same you can also define the type of the form group you can type of the form array you can define any things inside our reactive form you can define all the things typed that is the use of typed form now suppose you are calling on api right in the api calling you are calling you are creating an interface and that interface is going to pass in the get function same to same guys get or post function same to same guys in the case of reactive form you are going to pass the type of the form group type of the form control type of the form array you can do anything inside the thing it is totally depend upon you that is two things learn one is called you can get the proper type value second things we can able to get you can able to define the type of the form control because in basically form control is the last one right you are going to bind the form control into the application that is called the form control right now you can show that this is the way you can define the type of the value if you don't define type of the value based on the default value it's going to allocate the type just imagine here i did not define anything right what is the type of the name it's saying the string if i going to don't if i going to define here null here now it's a null that it's a null type only if you're going to define anything suppose let me define here suppose called array now the type will be array here 
what are the type if you don't specify the type will be here generic type will be here based on the value that is going to be changed if you don't specify the value that will be any type that you have to always remember but as a developer if you are using developing application angular 14 make sure that you have to define the type because it's giving you the type of the data right why not going to define must have to define okay now this thing got it what is the type form how define a type of the form control form group so form group you can go and define an attribute you can define here you can pass your type here it's up to you okay now i'm going not going to do that one it's up to you how you can do that and if you don't specify the type of the data based on the value it's going to be it's going to be happen uh, uh, it's going to be allocated the type of the data, whatever value you're going to pass that type is going to assign to the particular control and this is the way you're going to set and get the value okay now let's understand the next one what is next one okay let me do one thing guys by default name suppose going to set as Synotech. okay Synotech. now what happening Synotech? now by default value will be Synotech. now i have function called handle clear now sometimes you know you are creating the application in the application you have a button called reset so someone going to enter some value if you're going to click on the reset you know reset the value to reset the form group, what are you going to write? You're going to write this dot form group dot reset, right? This is going to use, which is if you're going to write in console dot log, this dot form group, uh, contact form, hello. Now it is going to give you the after reset, going to display the value. Let me do one thing. I'm going to print it here, like suppose um, before reset value let me a little bit scroll here guys before reset value and after reset value okay after reset value so what are going to do now guys you can see that by default i said the name as synotech okay forget about the value now define the okay now phone number blank now synotech i define the value now what going to happen in the in the here i want to add another button called clear okay it's called clear in the clear i'm going to call the function called handle clear okay this this thing i'm going to call let me save it after you save if you go to open let me run the application guys i forgot to run npm It's a very simple one, but understand the problem. Understand the problem. What are the features that are added? Because if you know reactive form, that is not that is not an issue, right? If you don't know reactive form, this is the problem. Now let's see. Building the application. Once it's built, we can see that we can able to see the forms. Sorry, it's throwing an error. Yes. Okay, now see this guys. I have a contact form. This is a we have a thing say by default is displaying synotech because we have set the okay. We have set the value called by default synotech. Due to that, we're going to open the things, it's going to display synotech here. Now, what are you going to do now? I'm going to do the clear. Once you create the clear, what going to happen? I need to clear the value understand if we're going to clear clear see this one what happening before reset see the value by default value syntax other value blank after reset everything got null right but let let them giving another scenario to understand the problem then why this feature is introduced in angular uh, 14. let me change to synotech here to suppose synu technology okay now once we click the clear what happened this synod technology also going to be clear right but what i do to do that my my requirement is whatever the initial value i have set initial value means if you page load the initial value is suppose synotech now someone going to clear so suppose i change to synod technology okay in this case going to clear i want the synotech should be here I want to display the initial value understand the problem if you're going to click the clear it's going to clear the entire value but what my requirement is 
सपोज इफ आई गोइंग टू क्लियर द वैल्यू आई वांट टू रिमेन माय ओल्डर वैल्यू विल बी व्हाटएवर द इनिशियल वैल्यू विल बी देयर दैट शुड बी देयर जस्ट इमेजिन द प्रॉब्लम सपोज यू आर क्रिएटिंग वन फॉर्म एंड दैट फॉर्म सपोज ऑन द पेज लोड सम डेटा इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द एपीआई एंड दैट एपीआई डेटा यू आर बाइंडिंग टू ईच एंड एवरी कंट्रोल सपोज समवन गोइंग टू एंटर सम डेटा चेंज सम डेटा एंड आफ्टर दैट सर्वर से वांट टू नो आई वांट टू गो फॉर द प्रीवियस वैल्यू देन व्हाट गोइंग टू डू दैट हाउ कैन गेट द प्रीवियस वैल्यू Once you change the value, that is very difficult way to get the older value. You can get it, you can get it, but for that reason you have to write a lot of code. Just understand. Suppose just understand you are suppose this page is loading. You are calling the API. From the API you are getting the data and binding the form. And some user is change the code. Some changes only three new. Or someone is going to change the runjan. Now suppose when someone going to oh no no I want to revert my older data. How can do? You have two option. either you have to reload the page again or for each and every control change you have to maintain this old value new value because in the control we have option called value change property right in value change property you can get the older value near value but for that reason you have to write the code for each and every control right it is not feasible but the requirement is if someone going to revert back to his initial value how can it revert no guys in in technically we don't have that option For that reason, we have to write the code to achieve that thing. Now, in Angular 14, they have given this option: how you can go and revert to your initial value. Initial value means understand this part only. Initial value means whatever the initial value you have set, how you can get the initial value when you are doing the reset of the form. That is the new feature she introduced in the case of the typed form. In this case, you can see that. Here in the form control, we have an attribute introduced that is called the non non nullables. You have to make it true. Non nullables true means it's got going to it's going to maintain the initial value of the control. Let's see the uh, uh, like the let's see the output. Then we'll discuss about a little bit more in depth on into this not nullable. Now, once you save it, guys, let me do it here and let me change to Sino Technology. Now here we're going to click on clear. You can see that, guys. What happened? Before value, Sino Technologies. After value, Sino Tech. What happened? This one, this not nullable true, is help us to get the initial value whatever you set into your application. Guys, like, trust me, this feature is a life-saving features. Uh, actually, we expect this thing. You you can't imagine. how much stress we did for build this kind of functionality in case of application suppose in an application our form is loading from dynamically from the api and our binding the data from the api user got change something just say oh, no i want to do my older value then to make as a revert you can't imagine for each and every control you are writing the code to maintain the data what is the old value what is the new value if someone is going to click the old revert back we're going to form older value get the newer value that is the very much painful for the reactive form and you can't imagine the reactive this angular 14 given this life saving technology like life saving tools this reactive form to achieve that one just imagine how good it is right you are creating dynamic form binding the data you are want to revert back to as it is make make as default in this case no need to write a single call simple clear create reset it's going to set your all the initial values that is the use of a initial value you can see that previously i have put sino technologies once i clear the data is clear the data but the value is coming as the default value that is called the new feature in reactive form that is called the non nullable equal to true non nullable true means it's going to be never going to make the component the control as nullable it's going to set The default value, whatever you set here, if you set x here, it's going to display x. It's going to display y. It's going to display y. And if you're going to make it dynamic, also, it's going to be dynamic. It's totally up to you how you can going to set the default value and how you can go and match the data. This is the way you can able to understand the use of not non-nullable attribute inside the things. But if you go to our this thing, you cannot find that that attribute. If you go to here. You cannot find in non-nullable. You never get non-nullable because there is no property available in the older version of Angular up to from 13 to older. From 14 to below to 14, there is no option called non-nullable. 
here to achieve this thing we have to write lot of code what lot of code we are going to subscribe to uh, this suppose you have to apply for phone number we are going to subscribe the phone number value changes you get the old value new value lot of thing we will do we are not going to discuss about that thing but just understand this is the one of the features it is introduced by the uh, angular 14 to achieve that non nullable things or get the initial value from the control clear this is the way you can go and work with the reactive type form this is the only one implementation let's go discuss about another implementation so guys always as a developer you must have to know the backward compatibility what is backward compatibility understand suppose my application is angular 13 now i want to convert this application to angular 14 that's a different part but after convert you know that in this case in this case we are using the all are the older form control right this form control is not a typed control because it's not it's on type control right which is not type control in this case if you're going to convert this control to type control now this kind of error will come right because we have to specify the type we don't know we, we are maintaining the all anonymous type here the conversion from the older version to newer version is not a possible in the case of form group because by default form control in the react in angular 14 is a typed in this case how we can go and support the backward compatibility of the application in the reactive form means in future if you're going to upgrade the angular 13 to angular 14 what about the reactive form because by default reactive form in angular 14 is a uh, typed but in case of the angular uh, angular 13 is untyped means there is no type will be there it's whatever going to define can define for that reason angular 14 is given a function that is called on type form group on typed form group means sorry guys on type form group means it's going to support the backward compatibility of the form means if you are using older one how you can incorporate with the newer one for that reason what going to do like same to same code let me copy this one and to same to same code here let me type suppose a uh, contact form on typed okay here instead of form group you have write the on typed use on tight form group and here instead of form control we are going to use on type form control okay just imagine you're going to use form type on type form control see this one it's going to throw an error there is no concept of type here see this it's no type of form here and this is available here but this older but let me remove this one you can use the non label but you can see that what happened guys here you can specify the type okay here you not specify the type here the open type if you go here right uh, suppose this dot on type form dot value you can see that what is the value type it's a any okay if you see this one what is the type it's called the partial type is the object now here i can space the hello here I cannot paste because it's a type to one, it's on type to one. Got it? How we can go and work with on type to one? By default, in Angular 14, it's typed. In the by default, if you're going to work with the, with the older version, suppose sometimes you require to work with some complex things that is not going to support by the I don't know the as of now, not have scenario. But suppose you are going to migrate from older to newer, that time is going to work on the on type to one. This is the one thing you have to know that what is type and on type. Because Suppose now we are not upgrading. In future, maybe require to upgrade your application to Angular 14. That time, this is going to help you to do the on type to one for the application, right? This is the way you have to do the type and on type into the application. Clear? Any doubt, guys, in this case? Okay, guys, hope you're able to understand what is the use of a reactive form, the type to one, how this type is going to work. Now how it's not going to work all these things we have discussed okay and suppose if you require this code guys i'll do one thing i'll go to host this code into the github i'm going to share the code into you all of you you can go and simple download this code i'm going to make it as a public you can everyone go and download this code okay let me show you how you can go and integrate this code into the git okay 
before that make let me go that please go feel free to write the uh, like our comment like uh, this uh, review i have shared al already the review link guys please go and write a review for us if you like the session and all these things because it's a free session i expect that if people should go and write some good review for us i have shared the uh, this link our review link please go click there and you're going to write the review it's good for us and one thing guys you guys even learn how to implement the angular real time into the project how the project is going to work you can feel free to join our like angular real time project batch it's uh, it's um, you can see the angular 14 if i'm going to implement the angular 14 project you can join our real time batch it's already in, in progress if i want to join you can join if you if you have anything in you have want for demo videos also you can request us we are going to send you the demo videos okay because we are going to show you how real time the things is work you can learn the angular anywhere that is okay what we are going to say you the actual use of angular components we are going to because the reactive form how much i discussed right there is a number of different different things you can do the reactive form the routing the standard component modules everything can know that where it's going to use if you're going to interested to learn the angular in depth as well as the real time project feel free to contact us you can go to start a batch for you okay